Hello, I'm Kimilia. This is Kini News. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has responded to Hadi on his claims that PAS was invited to join the government. Anwar said he did not know who had approached PAS, but it wasn't discussed by any of the top leaders in the unity government. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has denied making an offer to PAS to join the coalition government. Anwar told Utusa Malaysia after an event in Kuala Lumpur today that he did not know who had approached them. He said maybe it was some division leaders who extended the invitation, but what he knew was that the proposal to collaborate was neither raised nor discussed by the top leadership level in the Pakatan Harapan BN government. Anwar said this when asked about past President Abdul Hadi Awang's claim last Saturday that certain individuals had reached out to him to collaborate with the government. Hadi did not divulge details but alleged that the offer would only strengthen the government's position by adding more seats to it, but would not benefit PAS in any way. Meanwhile, PAS Deputy President Tuan Ibrahim Tuan Man has made similar claims, alleging that he too had been contacted by certain quarters for the same purpose. Tuan Ibrahim claimed that representatives of the government had met him to make the offer. However, he stressed that he would remain with Perikata National as promised during campaigning and said that he will not lie to the voters. Previously, PKR Deputy President Rafizi Ramli and AMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi had also denied Hadi's claim. Still on Anwar, the Prime Minister took Sanusi to task today for claiming that Penang belongs to Kedah. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim hit out at Kedah Menteri Besar Muhammad Sanusi Muhammad Noor today over his claim that Penang still belongs to Kedah. When asked about Sanusi's remarks, Anwar said as Menteri Besar, Sanusi should understand the constitution and be bound by its legal aspects. Kadang-kadang bila seorang pemimpin itu bercakap, dia kena faham perbagaan, dia kena faham perjanjian. Walaupun ada perjanjian yang jatuh setahun dulu, seribu tahun dulu, dia ada perjanjian minta akhir penubuhan persekutuan tanah Melayu, Malaysia, dan itu jelas. Saya nak ucap dari segi sandiwara politik soal lain, tapi sebagai seorang lebih besar, saya fikir wajar terikat dengan menang. Anwar added that all leaders need to respect the constitution agreement that has been consented to by all Malay rulers, including the Sultan of Kedah, on the issue. Yesterday, Sanusi was reported to have said that Kedah and Penang do not have a border because Penang still belongs to Kedah. Sanusi added that Kedah only shares a border with Perak and Perlis. Jolo could be hiding in Macau. This is according to a report in Al Jazeera, which quoted a written reply by the MACC. The Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission believes that Malaysian-born fugitive financer Lo Teg Jo is hiding in Macau. This is according to a report by Al Jazeera Today, which quoted the anti-graph body from a written response. According to the report, the MACC said that this was confirmed by several individuals who have seen Lowe in Macau. The report added that the revelation comes just weeks after the arrest of a relatively unknown 1MDB suspect, Ki Kok Tiam. On May 3rd, Ki, who is understood to be Lowe's alleged aide, was arrested when he arrived at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport. Al Jazeera cited a Malaysian police source as saying that Ki was deported from Macau for overstaying his visa. They added that Ki was interviewed by MACC officers and was released with the graft busters saying that no charges had been laid against him at this time. The MACC said they did not receive any notification from Macau regarding Key's repatriation, but was quoted as saying that it knew Ki was being deported from Macau based on intelligence networking. Al Jazeera quoted an official as saying that the investigation paper focused on the assets belonging to Key in Singapore has been completed and was submitted to the Attorney General's office for the next course of action. The report added that the MACC said it had been gathering intelligence since the government issued a travel ban against 1MDB suspects, including Key, and this took place shortly after the 2018 election. A business person submitted a document to the MACC today, which allegedly proves a link between Perikata National and gambling companies. 
A businessman lodged a report with the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission today over claims that Perikatan National had received funds from gambling companies. The business person, Rashidan Yusuf, also submitted a document to the MACC, which allegedly proved the link. This came after the government said the MACC had not yet opened an investigation into the allegations due to a lack of evidence. According to Free Malaysia Today, Rashidan Yusuf met with the MACC this morning and was reportedly questioned for around three hours. He told reporters the information he had is supported by documents and he would leave it to the MACC to investigate the matter. He added that he was not affiliated with any political party or NGO. Last December, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim had implied that PN's election funds partly came from gaming companies involved in special draws. However, last week, Minister in the Prime Minister's Department Azalina Othman Said told Parliament that the MACC had not yet opened an investigation paper on the allegations. She said this was as the MACC found the information to be too general and no parties were able to confirm the matter. This prompted outrage from PN, who accused Anwar of lying, with coalition leader Muhyiddin Yassin mulling a lawsuit. Anwar, however, was adamant that his remarks were evidence-based. The High Court in Kuala Lumpur granted leave for Bersatu to proceed with its legal bid to unfreeze the party's two bank accounts and to lift the travel ban on Muhyiddin Yassin. Judge Ahmad Kamal Muhammad Shahid allowed the judicial review leave application by the opposition party during open court proceedings this morning. The judge ruled that there are triable issues with the freezing order and travel ban, which require further ventilation by parties during a full trial of the matter. He added that while the blacklist against Muhyiddin has been lifted, the issue is not academic as the court needs to look into the ban as a whole and not in isolation. However, the judge did not allow Bersatu's application for interim relief for the release of part of the funds in the party's bank accounts to cover the party's daily expenses. The Home Ministry said that watches were confiscated from Swatch stores nationwide based on public complaints as they had LGBT letters on the dial. The Home Ministry raided Swatch stores and confiscated several watches as it had the letter LGBT on the dials. This is according to Home Minister Saifuddin Nasution Ismail. Berita Harian quoted Saifuddin as saying that the watch clearly has the letters LGBT on it and the Home Ministry acted upon public complaints. The minister said similar watch models were not sold in countries such as the United Arab Emirates and this was because Swatch knew of the religious sensitivities there. Previously, Swatch had said that there were no references to the LGBT community on the watch dials that were confiscated by Malaysian authorities. Swatch Group CEO Nick Hayek said Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim was misinformed on the matter. He said the colorful watches include the meaning of each pride color on their minute hands and two loops that form a rainbow. The watches were seized from Swatch stores on May 13th and 14th, allegedly for violating the Printing Presses and Publications Act 1984. Past Vice President Ahmad Samsuri Mokhtar revealed today that PN will be holding discussions on June 5th about seat distribution for the upcoming state polls. Past Vice President Ahmad Samsuri Mukhtar said PN will hold discussions related to the distribution of seats for the upcoming elections in six states on June 5th. He said representatives from the component parties would attend the meeting to reach a decision on the matter before it is referred to the PN Presidential Council. According to Samsuri, the coalition had previously held a meeting to discuss the seats, but there were some leaders of component parties who would not attend for certain reasons. He added that any issues that could not be resolved in the meeting would be brought to the Presidential Council for consideration and for a final decision to be made. Meanwhile, Samsuri was tight-lipped on the alleged existence of an offer for PAS to join the federal coalition government. He said he had personally never received such an offer from any party. He also asked reporters to direct the question to the party's president, Abdul Hadi Awang, and Secretary General Takiyuddin Hassan for further comment. 
And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.